recording now. So up until this point, whoop, with our CRUD apps, we haven't done a whole lot of authentication or pretty much anything like that. What we have done though, last, was it last Friday was New Site 6? NPMs, sorry. Um, New Site 6, we did a little bit of authentication where we log in a user, we get a token back, and at that point, a user's logged in, and the user has, once a, lo a user's logged in, they have access to certain web pages. They, they're allowed to do certain function operations within the application. So let's just kind of quickly review. I'm on the desktop. I'm in new site six. I'm just npm start. I just kind of want to review that real quick. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're low, on local host 3000. Um, as we recall in new site, we, when we started writing APIs, we weren't writing any APIs to a backend server like Django. We were using an express server with just some dummy data that, that was already um, at, added for us in the front end, or essentially we weren't using a Django backend, we were using an express server with da dummy data. <clears throat> so here's new site six. Uh, if I wanted to log in, I've got my, my name, tom at email.com. I enter my password, I submit. Now I have basics functionality or additional functionality. I'm able to add a new article. I've got this log out button that was originally logged in before the user was logged in. I have the app state that returns uh, this, this user token right here. And uh, now I'm able to navigate. Everything still works. I'm able to add an article. Uh, uh, some new article, uh, some other thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm able to add an article. I check it out, great. Here's my some new article, I'm back. And if I just do a hard refresh, all of a sudden my user's logged out. And it's like, that's not really practical because a lot of websites do hard refreshes. Uh, so how are we going to solve this? Um, and that's what kind of today, today's challenge is about uh, is do it to handle authentication on the back end using Django and have that authentication persist throughout your app to put, no matter how many hard refreshes you do or no matter kind of like where you uh, navigate to. Does anybody have any questions on what I just kind of reviewed? Uh, does anybody have any idea of how we can have that user persist? hard refreshes i'm sorry django has authentication and login and users and all that fun stuff right but how cookies cookies yep yeah. that's one way to do it so uh, i'm gonna kill this app and i'm gonna close it out and then we're gonna jump into uh what is this, is this today mark tuesday nope let's go to wednesday Oh man, we're way back there. Wednesday, March 18th. So there's really no new material, but the challenge today is rock, paper, scissors. In this challenge, you're just literally gonna create a full stack app that uh, a user has to play rock, paper, scissors against uh, the computer and we store that user's, uh, some user data, like the username, the number of games, or the user data, they were going to be storing is, you know, username, uh, whether the user won against the computer or not, what the user actually threw, like rock, paper, scissors, and what the comp computer threw. But before we even get into any of the game logic, uh, we have this release negative one. It's, it's, a, it's a stretch goal, but I highly recommend doing it because it's going to be crucial to your individual projects as well as, as, well as group projects. And that's authentication uh, through Django. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna go through the authentication, essentially the entire backend uh, of authenticating a user. And then I'm gonna uh, do, do some front end, but I'm not gonna actually go through all the game logic and storing the in initial data, like a, a game data. That's something you, you can do uh, today and 
figure out, kind of figure out on your own and, or work with a uh, partner. So, and what we're going to cover today or the tutorial we're going to follow is this, is just this medium Django and react Django authentication. So I heard Beck say we can store it in cookies. Where else can we store an authenticated user? Anybody know? So on each web page, they've got local storage. So you can store it in cookies. You can store it in local storage. There's also a session. You can store it in a session ID. So there's three different ways to store it. The way a lot of people are storing uh, authenticated users going like now is either in their cookie or the local storage. A lot, they're not, I don't want to say they're not using session ID a lot, but session ID essentially you store an ID that sit, looks similar to a token in the database. And so the reason why people are more going, leaning towards more front end authentication where that, that token is stored on the front end is <clears throat> is that for scalability issues, uh, for session IDs, they have to be stored in a database somewhere. So as you scale your users, you're going to have to store these session IDs. Uh, initially, it may be on the user table, but as you scale up, you might have to break that out into like a session table and associate that session ID with a user. And so that's why um, it's not as scalable as just using uh, local storage or a cookie. So in this lecture, I'm just gonna literally kind of walk through this, this tutorial all the way up until, so it literally just word for word tells you kind of what to do, uh, all the way up until they come, they get to the front end and then I'm gonna implement my own front end because I'm not really a big fan of how they input the, implemented their front end here. So all the way up into here, I'll, I'll do everything all the way up into where it says setting up React. And then I'll set up my own React front end. So the, I don't, I'm not going to read all this. There's sessions versus tokens. You can read all this. But essentially, we have to set up a new Django app. And we've done that plenty of times before. CD, CD desktop, Kilo challenges. Uh, did I get fork this? Yeah, it looks like I did. And I already get cloned it. So rock, paper, is it rock? Did I not do it? Where is it? Kilo challenges. So rock, paper, scissors, get clone. Uh, is rock, paper, scissors in here somewhere? Nope, all right. So I'm in here, I'm gonna get clone, rock, paper, scissors shows up right here. And I'm gonna CD in the rock, paper, scissors. I'm gonna open up into a new window. So we should be very familiar with setting up a new Django project from here on out. <clears throat> so I don't do it every day, so I might need some help. So I think it's Python, nope, it's Django, admin, start, project, what should we call it? So we're building a full stack Django application or full stack application using a Django backend, a React front end, and we're doing authentication. And we're gonna have like at least one, one table, which is like a game table. Um, start project, I'm gonna say rock, paper, scissors, uh, uh, Django. Oh no, yep. It is invalid because I only can have underscore. So there's my rock, paper, scissors, Django app. I'm going to, where should I go? I will CD into my R rock, paper, scissors, Django app. And in here, what do I need to do next? I need to set up a virtual environment. So Python, Python make VNV bin, wait, nope, VNV, VNV. There's my virtual environment. 
Come on, I need to activate it. Source DNB bin activate. I'm currently in my virtual environment. So I'm gonna clear the terminal. And then I'm going to pip install Django. Uh, what else should I install? Psycob. I always forget how you spell it. How do I spell Psycob? PSY. PSY. Psycob. I think you missed the C. Yeah. The C. Right yep. yep, that's it. All right, Psycop PG2. Right. Um, I'm gonna install that right now. There might be some other things I'm gonna have to install because I'm gonna be following that tutorial, that medium tutorial on getting up and running. Come on. I should probably set up a database. Uh, I'm actually gonna create a branch. Oh, crap. I'm just gonna uh, get get. How do I create a branch? Is it get check out dash b check out dash b? I'm gonna say uh, back end. All right. So I'm now working off of my master. I created a backend branch. This is where I'm going to be doing all my Django backend. And then once I'm done with it, I'm going to merge it into my master and then I'm going to branch off and do my front end and then merge my front end. Hopefully it all works. So backend. So pip install pip. Uh, I don't know what this is. I think we can do without it, but here we're going to be using some additional uh, Python libraries. Uh, there are, Three of them, there's Django REST Framework. So on Monday, when John uh, did the lecture in with serializers and creating uh, you know, JSON responses and being able to pass in uh, Python objects to the front end uh, in, in JSON, JSON, uh, Django REST framework can do that for us super easily, but we, but like, there's a lot of stuff going underneath the hood where we can't really see what's going on. So it just kind of looks like magic. Um, so on Monday we went reverted back and we wanted to do, we did that all manually, but essentially we can use Django REST frameworks to do the, the same thing we did on Monday, uh, with a, writing a lot less code, but there's a lot happening. There's a lot of magic happening on the, underneath the hood. Um, but we're gonna keep it, we're gonna still do it kind of like manually, but we're still gonna need these three libraries. Django REST framework, Django REST JWT. What, is, uh, what does JWT stand for? So JWT authentication stands for JSON web token. So that's something we're gonna get back from the Django app. It's just like a, a alphanumeric, extremely long, token just kind of how we saw in uh new site six so we're down here we're gonna have to install all these three things and then yeah so pip install pip install Django rest framework django jwt and Django cores header. All right, done there. Once we've done that, we're ready to create a Django project. We've already created our project, so we can skip this part. So at this point, your project structure should look like we've already good. So now we have to adjust some of our settings. So we have to install REST framework in our installed apps and cores headers. And then in addition to our middleware, we have to put this cores middleware, or yeah, cores headers, middleware, cores middleware. And that should come before this Django middleware common, common middleware, which should already be there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna copy that. Django settings. 
I delete that. So in here, install our REST, REST framework, course headers. And then here we have this Django middleware common, common middleware. Right above that, we want to put this, this cores middleware. Like that. There's some other things we need to do. We need to do some rest, put a rest framework object. To tell me specifically where, does it necessarily list where? I'm gonna put it down here. Rest framework default permissions, rest framework permissions is authenticated and rest framework uh, JSON web token authenticate, JSON web take token authentication, session authentication, as well as basic authentication. At the very end, we have our cores origin whitelist. We're probably gonna have to change that because it's gonna throw HTTP colon slash slash. If we don't do that, it'll more likely throw an error. All right, so we can read through this, great. But then it says, uh, if you really, you can read through this on your own. So, but then in our app, or not in our app, in our project URLs, I delete all that. We want to put the rest framework, JWT, as well as this path token OAuth or auth. So we're already almost ready to test whether or not this is working. So before we can do that, we need to create a user. And before we do that, we need to apply our, mig our migrations. So I don't have, do I have a, these are all my, so I've got a rock, paper, scissors database. There's nothing in it right now. So I wanna add that rock, paper, scissors database, PostgreSQL. So rock, paper, scissors, So now I've got a Postgres database instead of my SQLite database. All right, let's keep on going with the, we need to migrate. Let's first, so right now we haven't made any migrations because we haven't, right now we're just doing, dealing with authenticating a user. We haven't actually set up our models yet. So I just wanna get the authentication down pat, and then we can jump into how our models might look, or how our individual model might look, if we get to that point. All right, since I didn't create any models, uh, let's look here. I can just run python manage.python, manage.py, migrate. So I'm just migrating the internal uh, models. So I've got all these auth, all these auth models. Come over here, click on it. So here are all the new models that we have. All right, now we have to create a super user. I think we did this way back when, like a few weeks ago. Seemed like months ago. So I create a super user. I'm gonna use ta pre email address tom at email.com. 123, 123, it's gonna give me some errors because of its password um, requirements. Just click yes. Great, super user created successfully, clear it. Let's look at what we have to do next. Now we're gonna be running a server. Python manage.py run server. 
if I did everything right, hopefully everything works. Does anybody have any questions up until this point? What questions do you have? Nope. For the time, yeah. you kind of misspoke earlier when you were asking about OAuth versus auth. What's the difference between OAuth and auth? Oh, yeah, sorry. So OAuth, <clears throat> I don't know 100%. I think OAuth is essentially like if you want to log in to a website using your Google credentials or Facebook credentials, like there's that like log in via Google, click Google, and like, it like logs in, grabs your Google username or Google email and stuff like that. And so you're able to log in your app through your app using Google or Facebook. That's where I use, that's where I've seen OAuth. I think, I think there's actually more to it than that, but essentially, uh, that's actually, it's a good yeah. thing. It's like an open source protocol specifically for authentication going through, you can connect it to Google, Facebook, Twitter, and a few others, I think. Oath versus OAuth. So yeah, there's like a, there's, there's OAuth, there's OAuth 2.0, which is like a new one, but yeah. Is this so, the same as OmniAuth or is that different? I could not speak to that. I'm not sure. What's OmniAuth? It's the same uh, thing as OAuth, I think, but I'm not sure if they just kind of shorten it by saying OAuth instead of OmniAuth. It's you can log in with Google, Facebook too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just like, would you say no? It's like a, a new, a, it's a standard. Yeah, it's like an open protocol that anyone can access. Got it. Cool. So let's keep going. We ran the server. Now we just got to go to localhost. Go to logos eight thousand. That token, token auth. I, I, I'm, I always say OAuth because I'm used to using that. So token auth URL. So it comes here, obtain uh, JSON web token, and JSON web token is a a module or a method or that's in the REST framework, JWT, in the views. So it, it's, a, it's a method. Comes into here, method get not allowed. So if I type in my super username and password, I should get a token back. And this is all done via the REST framework, JWT. Does that make sense? up until this point. So I've got this backend. I've got this URL token OAuth, token auth. And uh, does it tell me that I have to do anything else in the... So I, I okay, now I got to start my actual app to build more routes, build my, my game logic and other items. So let's continue so python manage dot start app so let's create our app clear sorry Ooh. quit that cool so what should our app be called like rock paper scissors so python manage dot py uh, rock paper RPS Django, we should call RPS app. Oh. Forgot to say start app. So there's my rock, paper, scissors app. It's where I have all my models, views. So let's continue, start app. So they called their app core. This installed app, core apps, core config. 
I don't know if I did that. I think I just put in my app like it normally is. So I'm gonna go into settings. I have to put my app here. RPS app. You can also do core. What is it? Core or apps.coreconfig if you want. Not sure what the apps, the app.coreconfig does, but if you just type in your app like we normally have been into the installed apps, it should everything should still work. And yep. All right, now in, so we have, first we need to create a couple serializers for our user model. The serializers will be responsible for serializing and unserializing the user model into and out of various formats, primarily JSON in our case. Go ahead and create a serializer file. So in our app, is it just serializers.py? And we're gonna just copy and paste this. And this is all related to logging in a user, getting a user that where there's a serialized token that already exists. And let's see, user token name. So this is where we can create a new user. And here's where we can actually get a token if a user is already logged in or when a user is logged in. And these are all built-in methods in the REST framework and the REST framework JWT. And we're importing. So if you ever wanna use the internal Django user model, it's Django contrib auth models and we can import the user model. And in addition to the username, I also want the ID. <clears throat> That's just for my purposes, because I know once I get to the front end, instead of just retrieving the username, I also want the user's ID. We can read through this as to like what's actually going on right here. And now in our views, this is a lot of stuff. But if we just follow the tutorial, so we're getting HTTP response, redirect, the user model, REST framework, a bunch of stuff from the REST framework. And we're also uh, <clears throat> importing the serializers from our serializer file. So the user serializer and the user serializer with a token. Here's our user serializer, and here's our user serializer with a token. So determine the current user by their token and return their data. So that's what this current user is. Then we also have a class, user list. So create a new user, it's called user list because normally we get a method here too for retrieving a list of all user objects. That seems very inefficient. Return response. So, so when we're creating a new user, looks like we're getting a user, we're getting that data back. We're seeing whether or not that serializer is valid. We're saving that serializer. Then our response, we're sending that data back. User created, otherwise we're sending a bad request, 400 bad request, if there are any errors. So we can walk through this. So now we've got in our URLs, in our app, which we have to create, URLs, uh, PY. I'm gonna click that. User list, which you're grabbing from views or grabbing the current user. Uh, we're probably not going to get into the, the user list, like creating new users from the front end, but if you ever want to, this is how you do it. Uh, 
Now we'll hook up this file to the root config by adding the, that file. Core URLs. And then, and then we have to actually add that URL to our project URL path. What should this be called? Before it's called core, let's just call it rock, paper, scissors. Should that, should that be called that? I don't know. <laughs> we have to do include. RPS. RPS, there we go. Include uh, RPS app.urls. Here, their, their app is called Core. My, the app I decided to create is called Rock, Paper, Scissors, RPS app. So RPS, great. And now <clears throat> we have a, another file we actually have to create. It's a utils file, it's like utilities, which goes in our project. So, we're going to need to define a custom JavaScript web token response payload handler, which includes the user's serialized data within the my site directory, make a new file called utils py and fill it with the following data. So not within your app, but within your project, which my project is called RPS Django, create a utils, is it? Uh, in here, utils.py, and add this. So we're gonna have to change some stuff around. So it's not core, it should be RPS app, serializers, user serializer. Cool. Everything works. So all this is doing is adding a new users field with the user serialized data when a token is generated. This is going to be our new default uh, JSON web token response handler, which we can set up by adding a little bit to our settings file with this, this JWT auth. So in our settings, adding this here. JWT auth, <clears throat> response handler, my site. So we're gonna have to change this because this is not called my site, it is called RPS Django. Utils my, all right. Now when a user logs in, they'll get all their user data along with their token. Let's see if that in fact, is the case. Uh, how do I log out? Confirm. Oh, whoops. So I'm going to Python manage.py. I'm going to run server again. Hopefully it all works. If not, we're going to have to debug it somehow. So see, now when I just refreshed it, I grabbed the token and grabbed a user with the user ID and my username. And that stuff is coming from serializers, grabs the ID, username, and then just in case a user has a token, does the get token and ha handles these like already established methods. Does anybody have any questions up until this point? Zach, you look so young in that photo. All right, thank it's when he started his first company in his garage. No, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Twelve years ago. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. 
I'm just messing around, looking around. Okay. So if I refresh, now I'm gonna just do again TA pre, one, two, three. I get the token and user back. So when I go to the OAuth or the token auth and I type in my username and password, this is the response I should get back. So when we're building our, our models and we have an idea of what we want our users to have, like additional information, we should be building it in that table then where that user model is. You can extend that user model or you can create another model that incorporates all the existing things like built-in user model data in addition to some, some other data that you want. And that should be extending uh, Django user model. I don't like this. There, there, I'm sure there's that. There's also custom with, uh, with custom fields. There's like a there's like a bunch of resources on how to extend the user model with additional fields or creating additional user mo additional models and using that user like the built-in user model in other models. But yeah, you you could. It's easier to use the Django built-in user model and just extending additional fields. It like, I don't like it only because I don't like being able to see like the actual mo model, the user model. Cause I come from express where we, or node where we're, we declare everything. Like we create our user model from scratch. And so, but it's nice, it gets your app up and running. That's what Django is for. <clears throat> so let's look at, so that's everything. So I'm here, but now I'm stopping right here uh, cause I want to create my own uh, React front end. But before I get into the React front end, set up, we already kind of did this, start app game. So they tell they called game. I probably should have called it game. So user models, what should our user models look like? or what models should we have? So we handle the game logic on the front end, so all our back end will have to do is save game, completed games. Your game model should belong to a user, have a win status, won or lost. This could be a string or a Boolean, what makes more sense. User throw, a string that what the user played, either rock, scissors, paper, or a computer throw. So in my app, in my models, I can, I can create a class called game and models dot model. And then I have a user. Now, how do I get the built in user? Cause before we would like use like a foreign key, like foreign key, blah, 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 but we're using a different model. So a game belongs to a user. So the contrib model? The contrib? Yeah, the one that you showed us before. Contrib, Django contrib, so auth. From Django contrib dash auth dot models import user. Yep. So we can do models that foreign key user. And then we do on delete. We should do models cascade related name equals games. So I can go from the user and get all the games. And then uh, null equals true. That's just, my, you don't have to have that. I'm just gonna allow true for now. And then let's look back at the requirements. 
have a win status, won or lost. So in the win, what should I call it? And should it be a string or a Boolean value? Does it want like the total record or just wins or just losses? Or this, So the win status. So each throw, each game you play, like each time we go rock, paper, scissors, boom, whoever won that, it gets stored in the database as a game. So there's three possible states, right? Uh, a win and a loss and a draw. So, so we could do that or we can default like, hey, if you draw against the computer, you automatically lose. Oof. Or if you draw against a computer, you automatically win. It depends on how you <laughs> on how you want to handle that game logic. So uh, here I'm just going to use – we can do a char field or it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to do win status equals – Just make it so draws don't count at all, right? You could do that and I could just automatically – I can say draw and play again, but not save it to the database. Yes. Stuff like models, uh, char, char field, do max length. What is the max length? What's the win, loss? So four, right? Draw it, yeah. We could do user throw. Models. Why would so and then the win status? If you only had two two possible options, a boolean val valuable would make sense. So I'm just gonna if I wanted to do that, like for win status, I could be like, um, did win or and it could be like models dot. Boolean field. So it's just a true or false. But for here, user throw, max length equals SC. Scissors. You could just do RPS here, right? RPS? User has to see whether it's rock, paper, scissors, right? Is that what you're yeah, saying? yeah, so yeah, sorry. So right right here would be the char field, like it would say rock, paper, or scissors. I thought of associating <laughs> I, I like I got I associate I, I like I initially was like, oh well I'll have like a a throw table that has just three fields like rock, paper, or scissors, and then this the user throw would relate to that throw feel or throw model. Yeah, I got kind of initially get, went a little a little too much for it, what the requirements were. Computer, throw, same thing. Uh, so now I've got my game model. Uh, I'm gonna do Python manage.py. Make migrations. Uh oh. You didn't spell manage. Typo. This is typo. You did man manage dot g. Uh, all right. Gotta love those typos. Ah, <laughs> that's way off. Create a model game, which oh, created this initial migration script. So I'm going to Python manage.py migrate. I just want to see inside the database. So there's no game. If I refresh, there's my RPS app game. ID, user throw, user ID, right there. And now, I'm just gonna go to the front end. I'm gonna have 
you all determine what views, what game method, what logic you want. Um, and then I'm going to go to the front end and do a logged in user, like log in a user, get that token, store that token and do that part. So let's take a 10 minute brief break, be back at 945 and we'll get into the front end aspect of this application.